Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So those of you who watch my channel uh, regularly or have watched a number of my videos may well be familiar with this sword or in fact this type of sword. I, I have a few. Um, this is one of my favourite examples. And of course it is a cutlass. Now for those of you who don't know, I'm sure most of you do by now, but a cutlass is essentially a, a sailor's sidearm. Now when we say sidearm, it's important to point out that whilst we do sometimes have scabbards for these, they were generally kept on board a ship in racks. So in a sense, they were the ship's sidearm rather than necessarily the sailor's, sailor's personal sidearm. However, this is what we think of when we think of sailors fighting in hand-to-hand -hand combat, isn't it? It's, it's cutlasses. And in fact, they did use other weapons. They did use uh, carbines, um, rifles, muskets, um, sometimes things like blunderbusses. They did use bayonets on the end of long arms. They did sometimes use pistols. They did sometimes use boarding pikes. A boarding pike is essentially a, a, a long spear. Um, and in, in fact, there's some implication that they sometimes used so-called boarding axes, um, which are sort of like a tomahawk. Uh, I've spoken about them in previous videos, although I remain somewhat sceptical about how much boarding axes were actually used in combat, because I think cutlasses were, generally speaking, a better hand weapon and more uh, completely abundant and uh, um, easy to get hold of for a sailor on a ship anyway. Um, and also things like belaying pins uh, might have been, uh, as we see in movies of course, may have been kind of weapons that were occasionally used and grabbed because they were close to hand if something else wasn't already in the hand. But by and large, the cutlass, certainly in the British Navy and the French Navy as well, um, the, the cutlass was certainly by the Napoleonic era and into the 19th century, the standard sailor's sidearm. However, was it the was it the pirate's sidearm? So when, when we watch um, movies or indeed TV series like Black Sails, um, we think of the cutlass as the iconic sidearm of the sailor um, and of the pirate specifically, but was it? in that era. Well, the thing we have to mention, of course, is that piracy was at its kind of height in the 17th and 18th centuries. And we could say that the, the golden age of piracy starts sometime in the 16th century and really finishes pretty much by the, let's say, by the middle of the 18th century. Late 18th century at a push. Um, so it doesn't really go into the, the Napoleonic era, really. Yes, of course, there was still piracy around, but the golden age of piracy, what we think of as classic pirates, um, you know, kind of Treasure Island type stuff, we're looking there at um, essentially mostly late 17th and early 18th century. Um, and of course, piracy started uh, as a state uh, endorsed thing, or the golden age of piracy started as a state endorsed thing in the Elizabethan period, so around 1600, end of the 1500s, beginning of the 1600s. Um, but the classic kind of Treasure Island piracy and a lot of the famous Blackbeard and, and pirates like this that you will know of are essentially around at the beginning of the 18th century, that is the early 1700s. Now, what's important to note is this did not exist at that time. This classic style of cutlass did not exist then. Um, we've got a large bull guard and a short-ish um, curved, single-edged for the most part, blade. What did exist were certain types of hanger, late falchion, what's sometimes known as a dussac. So sometimes what we find are blades somewhat similar to this, um, sh short-ish, broad-ish, and essentially a cut and thrust blade that, that's got quite a decent cutting capacity and is usually or very often curved. What we often find are blades like that mounted on various forms of hilt, anything from types of basket hilt, um, so-called so, so Sinclair hilts, for example, um, right the way through to very simple hilts, almost, you know, just a cross guard or just a knuckle bow. Now, if it's just got a cross guard or a knuckle bow, um, it could be called a cutlass. And linguistically, the word cutlass seems to come, at least in English, from the French word, um, and that seems to be indicative of a machete-like blade on any kind of hilt. It kind of doesn't matter. But in modern English parlance, uh, cutlass is usually regarded as a specifically naval sidearm and usually with a large dished bold hilt. And notice that the hilt is symmetrical because these weapons were not usually worn or not very often worn. They were usually kept in racks on board ships. So therefore there's no need to have an asymmetrical hilt as we see with 
cavalry swords like this, for example, it has an asymmetrical hilt, partly because um, the part of the hand that most needs protecting is on, if you're right-handed, on the right-hand side, and only the thumb and the end of the fingers need protecting on the left-hand side, but also because it, if you're going to be wearing them on campaign, and remember that swords get predominantly worn rather than fought with, if you're going to be wearing it for hundreds and hundreds of hours, thousands of hours on campaign, you want something that's convenient and um, easy to wear. When you've got a symmetrical hilt like this, it becomes more difficult to wear, and in fact, you do find symmetrical hilts obviously on earlier period swords, um, if we look at Highland basket hilts and uh, mortuary hilts and certain types of rapier and side sword hilt, but they tend to be worn in a lower slung fashion than was fashionable at this point. Anyway, that's a, that's a tangent to the main point. So this is what we regard as the classic cutlass, but this type of sword, despite the fact that you see some of these in black sails, which is supposed to be set in about 1730, I seem to remember, you do not see um, you do see these types of cutlass in black sails, but you shouldn't do at that date. What you should see are things that look a little bit more like this. So what this is, is a hanger. So by the um, Napoleonic era, these were, although they could be termed a cutlass, um, and, and sometimes, for example, in um, the police force, they used a short sword similar to this, and that was often that was usually referred to as a hanger, but could occasionally be referred to as cut as a cutlass. And functionally, they're very similar. But of course, what's the big difference? The big difference is we don't have a big bowl handguard, and that really changes how you use the weapon to a large degree. Because of course, um, in the Victorian cutlass exercise, the sword is held out in front of you, usually point down, at least in Britain, in other systems it might be point up, but with the hilt presented forward, because you've got that large bowl hilt protecting your hand. You do not have that so much if you've just got a simple knuckle bow. So, it's important to note that pirates in the classic golden age of, of piracy should not have whether it's a cartoon um, like, uh, um, like Peter Pan or whether it's a, a series like Black Sails, should not have cutlasses that look like this with a large bowl hilt. The bowl hilt actually descends more or less, at least in Britain, from the uh, figure eight hilt, which comes around shortly before the Napoleonic era. So it's really a late 18th century invention. If we're talking about the 1680s through to the 1750s, then really we would expect to see sidearms more like this with simpler and more minimalistic handguards. And I have to say, as a weapon, they tend to be lighter and more nimble as well because they've got less mass in the hilt. And also notice that the one of the characteristic things, at least in Britain and France, to yep, with French, um, French cutlasses as well, and certainly some German cutlasses, they have a solid, um, or at least a metallic, grip as well. So they're very, very robust, quite heavy, practically indestructible, um, but they're never going to fall apart and the wood isn't going to rot on board a ship or anything like that. They're, they're very, very robust things. Um, earlier in the 18th century, we tend to have swords like this where we have a typically an organic grip of some kind, wood, bone. This is actually a fancy one, ivory. I'll talk more specifically about this actual example in a future video. So, um, to sum up, essentially, the golden age of piracy, the swords that we should really see pirates using are um, common, common pirates should be using things that look somewhat like this. Sometimes they might have a more enclosed hilt, but they won't be the Napoleonic and 19th century style bowl hilt. They'll be more like certain types of basket hilt um, that we see on Dussacs, for example. Um, things like the Sinclair hilt. Sometimes they'll even have a cross guard with the basket hilt. But um, very often there'll be a, quite a simple hilt, like just with a knuckle bow, and occasionally just with a cross guard. Um, and with a relatively light, relatively short, usually curved blade. And this one is with a clipped point. You'll see quite a sexy shaped um, kind of hook at the end there, which is sharpened on the false edge, incidentally. Um, and uh, officers, pirate officers or leaders, captains, this type of thing, would very often have the same types of swords that a, an officer would have in the Royal Navy, for example, or the French Navy or the Spanish Navy at that time. So they may very well have a small sword or a spadroon or certain types of rapier that were still around. For example, in Spain, they were still using cup hilt rapiers. Or indeed, and very commonly, 
we might see longer bladed basket hilted swords, for example, back swords and broadswords, things similar to the Highland broadsword. Um, perhaps late form, not really the mortuary hilted sword, although um, Flint famously uses one of those in black sails, um, but that's kind of an earlier, it's a mid 17th century style sword, so it's a little bit, it's a bit old fashioned for, for the date of black sails. But essentially types of back sword and broad sword, what a cavalry officer might carry, for example, and, or it could indeed be a foreign type of sword. We know that pirates sometimes had exotic weapons, they might carry a katana, they might carry a Chinese or a Sri Lankan sword. We even know in the English Civil War that at least one English commander carried a Sri Lankan castane sword. Um, so it could be any type of sword they'd be carrying, but it would almost certainly, usually, well, in fact certainly, never be a 19th century cutlass. Um, so to sum up, that is the point, is that when we're looking at pirates in the golden age of piracy, they should not be carrying Stars of sword that only came about in the Napoleonic era, like the bowl hilted cutlass, they should be carrying swords that were around at that time. Uh, for example, earlier types of hanger that gave rise to that type of cutlass, or indeed back swords, broad swords, late period rapiers, small swords, spadroons, these kinds of things. Cheers, folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook. You can buy t shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon, or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.